Hey folks. Looks like things are there. Can somebody else talk to make sure I've got my speaker working here? Hi, hello. Okay, I guess not. All right, anybody else? Hello. Okay, at least I got it on my end. Thank you, Trishank. Sure. My speaker keeps on switching to alternative inputs. And hello, Sam. There's Justin. Hello. Hi. Okay, great. Has everybody hold it? No, okay, this is not a good shirt for video. I always forget that little lined rule, but we'll just do a, a special moray pattern just to keep people interesting. Zoom bombing, okay. <laughs> uh, let's see, we didn't, uh, I did not do, I ignored my reminder to myself on Friday about an agenda today, so I apologize. Um, I figured we'll just start with status on where we are on um, the various working groups. And um, just, copy and paste something from up above there. Um, yep. Yeah, I mean, we started having this conversation well, at the party of our last call and then partly on Slack over the end of last week um, about um, snapshots um, and this is on the notary v2 oci thread no on the notary v2 channel me and santiago's discussion but that was a follow-up from the discussion that we had previously at the great which was um 
Um, really about how you how you should how you should represent the tough concept of a collection in a registry um and how it differs from how you would represent it in a file system and whether that um Um, whether that affects how we get people to build stuff in a registry. <laughs> yeah, I, I was trying to figure out, because I, mean, I think look, we're all busy. We all see things. We all read, skim some documents, and then we make assumptions around what the content is. And it, it is hard to keep up with everything, especially these OS projects. Um, I've been trying to be extra careful to say the stuff we're doing with Notary V2 is, and maybe the Notary word carries more weight than or more meaning to some, but we're literally just trying to sign content. We don't really care what the content is. If the content is these other things, great. But, and that's what I try to capture in that picture of the, in the scenarios document. So I can't tell if there's just, cause I see this scope creep conversation come up and everything. Um, and I, I'm trying to make sure that I don't think anybody is trying to do scope creep here. I think we had a healthy discussion early on around certain things around Providence and others, but I think we're, I'm hoping we found a good balance for that. Um, whereas the notary stuff, like, sorry, the tough stuff looks a little more downstream. And if there's a way to represent that in a, in a tough document, whether it's a tough document, an S bomb, cause I know those the folks are working on that, then, then great. But it, I guess I'm just trying to figure out, are we, is there still confusion? Is it just a matter of reading more? I, I see Trisha is here, but I don't see Santiago. Further up. Uh, Santiago here, I'm not sure, but Marie oh, and Lucas. Yeah, sorry, oh, sorry, you meant in the comment, oh, sorry. And, uh, yeah, sorry, I'm just saying on oh, the call. Oh yeah, sorry, yeah, I don't think he is to, yeah, I was just checking this. Um, like Trisha, how often do you talk to Santiago? I know you guys at least used to work together pretty closely. Um, oh yeah, uh, I mean, I uh, wouldn't say like every day, but you know, fairly often we keep in touch. Uh, is there any concern you want me to relate to him, or what's the what's the story? I'm just trying to make sure that there isn't a concern. Like, I I don't believe we are, you know, trying to do more than just signing content. And if one of the content is a tough document, I'm calling it a tough document, but it's not the right term, an S bomb or other things, then that's fine. And I'm not sure if Trish uh, Santiago feels we are trying to do more or or not. So I was, uh, I guess I was using the proxy for him. I see. Um, so my, I, I, yeah, oh. go on, Marina. Okay. Well, just my understanding from the discussion was that he was worried that we were only going to support the SBOG format. And he wanted to make sure, like, you know, more general formats could also be supported by whatever we come up with. Uh, yeah, if you look at that scenarios thing that I put, the, especially the visual part where I try to pull it all together, I actually intentionally use SB lowercase o m because I know in the working group that him and Kate are working on, they were specifically using uppercase o and it had a meaning. And I tried to put as much text in there and generalize the icons and everything to say, I don't care whether it's Vincent's S bomb format that he's doing with Red Hat and Quay <laughs> or, you know, K's and Kate's, the, the Santiago's. Like, I think we all have got, I, I think, and, you know, I'm looking at, like Derek's picture doesn't nod, um, you know, others that to think, are, are we in agreement that we are just trying to figure out, like, here's something that we don't care what it is in the registry, but just we, we do say that here is a signature that says this thing is still what it says it was. Right. And I think that's important. I think, I think the, the, the more important point that we should address at some point is his concern about the snapshot metadata, which is there in tough for a reason. Um, it's not really there in Notary V1, right? Every collection, every bundle or image or whatever you put in there will have its own snapshot metadata, which is not great. It doesn't give you the state. Like, for example, it doesn't tell you anything about dependencies, right? Which versions of things go along with which other versions. That's a discussion that we should have. We don't need to have it right now, but I think that's an important security point that has come up 
at least twice. Well, that's a, yeah, I mean, that's the discussion that I was trying to have with Santiago, and I think it was a bit, I think there was some confusion and, and clarity, not lack of clarity about that, but I think it is, um, um, I think that, um, to some extent the registry has to, I mean, the, the, the snapshot has to be something that registry I would to understand if it's going to, or maybe not. Um, but does it? I think that's the piece that I'm trying to figure out. Like, um, is that an add-on that says, one of the things that you sign is this other metadata document, if you will, and all we're saying is that document is still signed, the key is still valid because there's no revocation happened. And then a tough tool chain, for instance, can do that kind of verification because at least the content was moved between registries is still said to be secured. But it doesn't eliminate tough from doing something unique that they want to do, or let's say Docker wants to do something unique or Red Hat wants to do something unique. I mean, um, you, um, uh, that was the original discussion we were having about CNAB with thin and thick manifests and um, you, the way that you're expected to do things in a registry is such that everything you want to refer to in an item that the registry understands about, i.e. Um, needs to need to be pointed at and needs to consist of things in the same repository the same registry repository because well, of are, are you, how the authentication limitations or are you talking about authentication well you to retrieve a to retrieve an object from a manifest you just have a sha and it's an object in the same repository it's not it's not just any object in the same registry that you're referring to right but i can't make cross cross registry repository assertions about something and then sign them in the current oci model well but a manifest is a single item with multiple layers but the single item so I don't know how that would span multiple repos. An index. Well, no, exactly. Where so you can't make cross repo assertions about, for example, dependencies for. But yeah, I really not. Image dependencies are in scope here. I mean, right now the image format doesn't have dependencies. So yeah. So the, the the discussion was about um, with Santiago saying that if we couldn't support any kind of dependency then, or any kind of collection statement then, it didn't, um, to paraphrase, it wasn't kind of very useful for making the kinds of security assertions he wants to make. Uh, I mean, does uh, have if a are, uh, so enthusiastic about signing arbitrary artifacts, then, I have a Helm chart that is signed and that refers to all the images by digest and that gives you a single consistent snapshot. It doesn't have to be an image function. It's a way how to how you deploy those images. Those images are properly signed, even if they are deployed in some other set of versions. Yeah, that was more or less. Insist on, on a specific configuration of five images in with five specific digests make that a separate artifact and that artifact can that refer, refer to other repositories within the registry or to different registries directly. There are no physical limitations anymore. But, yeah, but then there's, you're, you're opening yourself up to a, a lot of problems with that because you either do one of two things, both of which are bad. You either directly pin everything to specific versions which as soon as there's security updates for anything, then every person who's gone and directly pinned everything to versions has to go and know to update their things, which is bad. Um, or you say, well, just give me whatever version the 
the repository happens to tell me they want to give me at this specific time. And trusting the repository to do that and not give you an old vulnerable version of something is also a big problem because you know, old vulnerable soft, well, old software is vulnerable software in, in like tons and tons of cases. So what, what you want is you want something where you can say effectively, give me the latest version of this. You want to have a way to say that and not have a repository that is hacked, be able to roll you back to sort of the beginning of time, which is the, you know, which is the property that you, you want out of, out of this and just having the helm chart example doesn't doesn't address that well that's the time step step snapshot uh, function of tab that's not the snapshot function the snapshot function and a helm chart that in specific digests of the Im images that's one to one equivalent as far as i can see it's just a different way to store that so so timestamp is is a little different timestamp tells you the last time anything and the collection of the repository has changed. It doesn't tell you what change, it just tells you there was a change. And in the context of um, some large like registry that's being run by Amazon or something, then timestamp actually is fairly meaningless because effectively it's always going to be changing. The only thing it's really telling you is it's making sure that um, someone's not trying to replay old information that, you know, that, that was from before, but you know, it, it will always change because, you know, you're getting however many updates a second. In well, that's the case of- because, because the timestamp is a, a repository scope. It could just as well be at image scope. Yeah, there's two things we need to distinguish here. I think there's some confusion, which is that, so we have different repositories in the same registry, right? Right now we have timestamp and snapshot per repository on the registry. What we're talking about is timestamp snapshot for everything on the registry. It gives you very different security properties. Right. And it's the security properties that I think you actually want to have. And there's a, there's a natural question that we can either talk about now or we can leave till later about, you know, is it feasible? Like what, what are the feasibility or other issues with that in terms of performance and things, which, I think it can be done in a, in a quite reasonable way without a, a lot of like fuss. But I think the important thing, first of all, is to make sure we're all on the same page that, that, you know, that we get a lot by having this. There's a lot security wise that's important that you get by having this property where someone can't just go and give you the oldest version of something that happens to be signed with, um, you know, happens to be signed by a trusted party. But I think there's a well, I think scope of what we're talking about here, though, because there's there's certainly uh, products and projects that are trying to do exactly that. All we're saying, from a notary perspective, all we're saying is at this point, when we pull content from a registry, there's no guarantee it is what it you know that it's from the original author, and that's the scope of what we're trying to do here. So, for instance, if wait, I wait, why why is this the scope? Microsoft, that was signed on Monday of two weeks ago. If I pull it today, it may, it, I just want to know it is still the thing that Microsoft had put out. If there's you know, vulnerabilities in it, that's a separate thing that looks at it. And as long as the key that Microsoft signed with is still valid, then that's a valid state because there's always, it's very hard to find no vulnerabilities in software. It's just better whether those vulnerabilities are impactful or whether you approve those. So all we're trying to say is here is a finite thing. It is a single item, which is what manifest represents. It's an index, which is a collection of things. And then we, but we don't even really care what the thing is. It's just a thing. One of the things could be a helm chart, which it itself has ways to reference other artifacts, um, or in that case, it's images, but that's all we're trying to say. Well, no, I think that's, I don't think no, that's, that's, that, that's a different argument. Yeah, that, that's, Sorry, Justin, you're going to step in, I think. Yeah, I think, uh, I, Steve, I wouldn't agree that that's all we're trying to provide. I think the discussion around the threat model um, says, I mean, I think, I think many of us would agree that providing something that provides, for example, rollback protection is a, really good idea 
Um, the assumption there is the key has been compromised in some fashion. No, no, the key is, no, just assumption of like whether someone being able to persuade you to download Windows 7 and telling you this is the latest version of Windows is not a good idea. If so, that's a, that's a good example. Well, could it, have happened. Somebody could have hacked I, the index or the tag. I think, and in that case, you're right that that's a somebody either if they didn't steal the key, they just somehow got credentials because it's two parts, right? Do I get credentials to push to a registry, and then do I have the ability to sign that as the original entity? So we screwed up before we pushed up things that shouldn't have been. So in that case, it's still signed by Microsoft. It's still wrong. And then it should get rolled back. If somebody has hacked something, but it, the thing they pushed in is not signed by Microsoft, that's the detection. If somebody compromised our key, then not only should that key be revoked, but yes, it should be rolled back as well. So I, I, I feel like we're really protection in that is useful in principle, just because the latest tag is the default and it's so widespread in the Rocket community, but it's not essential in that enterprise deployments tend to pin versions anyway. Uh, that's one and two, pretty much number one requirement of this project is to have working disconnected support, in which case we are giving up on timestamps or at least fresh, fresh timestamps anyway. So I think it's useful to have the timestamps and the rollback support in there as an option I wouldn't say that it is a mandatory part of the security model. It just can't be with disconnected systems. So I, I missed a word you said in there. You said working something support. It's the most important thing is to have working what support. I didn't understand. A rollback protection or a timestamp, the timestamp mechanism of stuff overall. Yeah, so, so you, you have to have rollback protection. That's, that's true. And I'm sorry, I joined late because of all the Zoom changes, which God, I hate the new Zoom. Um, so I, I don't know if we're planning on using Zoom for future meetings, but I hope not. But um, let me go back and 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 ask something I, I wanted to say because I, I kind of missed the thread of the meeting. But it feels like we're rehashing things that we discussed in detail in the threat modeling subgroup. And I don't know it, that I, it feels like. Um, I, was there like a, a, was the threat modeling group supposed to present something today or? No, no, this, this, it, was, it, it, uh, this was, came out of, sorry, you missed the beginning. This came out of the discussion that me and Santiago were having on Slack in the Notary V2 group because there seemed to be a bunch of confusion about, um, really about collections and how they should be represented in a registry and what, and this issue of what's feasible versus what we should be doing exactly and what uh, the discussion we we're having at the last call we had about what the difference is between it do other differences with a registry versus a file system significant in any way right okay um what do we think the best way to try to resolve some of this discussion is because I feel like we're we're saying not quite the same things we're like I feel like for example the the examples that I'm giving are not the same as the examples that Steve is giving and we're kind of in some cases talking past each other which I think the scenarios and at times has been helpful with resolving some of those issues I don't know if there's a another way we could resolve this given I don't think we're going to be able to discuss this out well in the next seven minutes and get everybody to say, yeah, we should clearly be doing X. Or should we continue this in the threat modeling discussion when we have our next meeting for those that are interested in that? I, mean, I would like to base this in the scenarios in the sense that hopefully we've captured the right scenarios. If there's additional ones or tweaks, we should capture that. So we do have a way, hey, in scenario foo, this is what we're trying to accomplish and this is what we haven't achieved or hey we've realized we did not capture this other thing in the scenarios we should add that because when i think of collections from a registry um, we only have one way to represent a collection a collection of things we have a collection of layers but i don't consider that's a persistence model a manifest stores the thing 
an index store is a collection of things. Now there's other technologies like Helm charts, which has a way to reference other things, but all, but, and, and those are, and those may be viable conversations we should have about what do we think about collections, but today I only think of uh, the registry having one collect as, as a generic, right? Cause we're not trying to say we're specializing in one artifact type. Index is the only thing that we have that represents collections of things that could be signed. I mean, we're jumping from like a high level scenario goal, like very deep into a specific design you have in mind. And I think that's part of the problem because from a threat modeling standpoint, like we're, we're not trying to presuppose a design. We're trying to figure out what we need to make the damn thing secure. And I think I think that's I think where some of this disconnect is is coming from, um, which I think is it, it's hard to see how we can resolve that without, um, you know, without like effectively having either a straw man design that we would would go through, which I think would be a big. Um, I think would be quite premature now, um, or you know, alternatively, to get the threat model together, discuss what we want to accomplish, and then see how the pieces fit together. Um, because it there's there's a lot you, that's left on the table um, if if we give up a lot of these rollback protections, and I think it would you know it, it these decisions are the ones that haunt your organizations and your security teams you know, like in perpetuity if done wrong. And so we, we absolutely at least want everyone to be very aware of the problems they would have if they make a pretty drastic choice here. No, it's fair. I, you're right. There's a certain part where we are trying to be careful of the design. I, I would think it was more of constraint. Like we're rebuilding the bathroom because we want to be better, right? But it still has to fit within a certain amount of walls and there's some pushing you can do in places. So we are trying to fit the, our signing solution into what is a registry today. Um, we have a solution with Docker. That, yeah, but I think that's not, yeah, I think that we shouldn't um, necessarily, I mean, we, we're going to make some some changes we could design new artifact types. The question is, what's actually um, necessary? Right. Well, we we want to run through this exercise. I mean, I I know we don't want to finish all like the design and stuff up front, but we're trying to run through the exercise at least to know what kind of stuff we would need to add to the registry in the future. Um, so it's 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 kind of hard to do both at the same time, but. I'm, I'm here because I'm interested actually in the, the threat model discussion because I, I think a lot of that is relevant to figuring out like, like I know a lot about how the registry works, but I'm not quite sure how it's protecting against it, how we should be thinking about some of these endpoints and how these yeah, can interactions. I, yeah, can I, can I add something on top of that, which is maybe it would be a good idea to say our next meeting is going to be about threat modeling, but we should hash out these issues. What do you guys think? Well, we did say this was going to be a status, a summary of some of the breakouts. So, yeah, I mean, I'm quite, yeah, we should definitely have a another threat modeling meeting. I think that would make sense. Okay, so we have two minutes left for what we said. We reduce this purposely down to half an hour is to give times for other people to do their other breakouts. Um, there's uh, so one, Justin, thanks for joining um, Kapos. I, you had one comment on the scenarios. If you could help me with what you're proposing there, I would like to get the scenarios closed down. So not that it's locked, we can certainly iterate, but there's a lot of changes that you would propose that I did a bunch of edits that I just like to get merged in. Um, likewise, if you guys can do something in the threat modeling working group, that'd be awesome. Um, and then we can, you know, kind of figure out here's what the different groups are coming. Hey, like we want to do this. We're working with this constraint of our registry, but here's some things that we need to change. And they're not radical changes, they're reasonable changes, and they have a great payoff. That's a great conversation to have. Um, we probably need to start figuring out about the UX experience as well, because when I, you know, are we able to get this to a usable form? 
Um, that's a little bit later, but there's some constraints to that. Uh, so I think that like we're, we're obviously, we're living through a pandemic. It's difficult enough to do these kind of projects and put this on top of us. Um, if there's, uh, we're, we're kind of now in the middle of, this is gonna be a long while. It's not solving up next week and we could hold our breath. So I don't know if there's a, an opportunity we can get more dedicated focus. I'm looking at our own. I see Sajay was able to join. I have some other folks that have been wanting to spend more time in this, so I will make sure that those experts are more engaged in things like the threat model conversation and key management. But I'm hoping we can kind of get to a, you know, more regular focused ownership of particular areas and, and have here, here our, our team debated this, so this is what we came back with. That would be great if we can kind of start making the, that progress in these working groups. Is that reasonable at this point or is that the world just a little bit too crazy right now? Uh, I mean, I, I guess I'll say that um, like personally, I've had a lot of, recently I've been unwell and had uh, times like right now where I feel totally normal, um, but I can't you know, say what I, is gonna happen like tomorrow or how I'm gonna be feeling in the future. But I think, um, you know, yeah, just uh, we should continue to work together and be conscious that people might need more time than you would expect, um, you know, and don't, I would also say, don't be afraid to send a, a concern for someone's health uh, ping to them, um, maybe more than a, damn it, why haven't you done this, uh, whatever kind of thing, and, and people will often take that as a, damn it, why haven't you done this thing anyway, but, you know, maybe that'll get them moving. Yeah, I, I hope you're doing well, Justin. It's definitely there's that aspect of things. Um, yeah, last, I think it was a week or two ago, one of the things I was kind of putting out there is we know people have challenges personally for various reasons, health or just managing their family. And we want to be careful not to lock anybody out who's been busy, that they will put some proposals out and give people a chance to read on their own time, not that they have to achieve this call or what others. So, um, and if there's somebody that is leading a particular working group that has to back out for whatever reason, that they just hand off to somebody else so we could try to make some progress um, while making sure that person's still you know, able to take care of their thing. Um, that's our hope. Like we just, we know that uh, it's, a, it's a difficult time. So um, Cormac, I'm looking to you here. You were taking that effort. Do you feel like you can get some more meetings going between Derek and others? Yeah, I, mean, I think it's uh, just my timetable is a bit difficult at the moment because I, um, I tend to have too many meetings. Um, but um, um, yeah, I can find some time. Um, yeah, I will sync on the channel for some times that work for people. Okay. All right, why don't we do that? Well, let's, uh, for this working group, let's again, we'll meet next week, same time. Um, let's shoot for having uh, some kind of status of the various breakouts, certainly the threat model, key management, or threat model, AKA key man, not AKA, but also key management was in that as well. Maybe there's, this can start getting split out because I know there's some separate conversations happening there. Um, and if we can close out the scenarios and just uh, leave room for, you know, iteration then at least we get to a place where I can look at one place and not have to consider PRs. Uh, and if we can start doing the same thing with the uh, uh, threat modeling, that'd be awesome. This way people have a chance to know what they're reading and where we're at. So with that, um, we're a couple of minutes over. I'll let everybody get back to their crazy weeks. And um, Justin, I hope you're doing well. Justin, and uh, for others, that good point. If we're not seeing somebody we expect to see, maybe just reach out and make sure they're doing okay. Sounds good. See everybody later. Thanks, folks. Take care, everyone. Bye. Thanks.